Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are taking a look at some of the things that happened this year on the market in FIFA 20 and looking how that compared to last year in FIFA 19 and what we learned in the market, through the market this year, based off of what EA did that was the same as last year and that, or that was different than last year because this market was very, very different than last year. They had content that came out this year that was very different than in years past. So I'm taking a look at today, all of the content we got this year, the market movements that we saw, things that we saw EA do that uh, we can learn from going forward that we could probably expect in FIFA 21, and also ways to help you stay one step ahead as we do get closer to FUT 21 um, and the new game coming out. So there's going to be like a couple main talking points today. One of them is going to be Icon SBCs. Second one is going to be... Um, you know, like guaranteed player SBCs. And the third one is going to be constant pack supply in FIFA 20, which I'm calling the year of supply. All right, let's talk about icon SBCs straight off the bat. This year on FIFA, we had more icon SBCs than ever. And people freaking love getting a chance at packing an icon. Even when at the end of the game right now where these icon cards are no longer the best version of, like these aren't the best cards in the game. Now there's a couple of them that are, um, you know, your R9, your Cruyff, your um, Pele, cards like that. Those are still end game, top tier, and like the best of the best cards on this game. But there are team of the season cards out now that have much better statistics and much better ratings than some of these icon cards do, yet there is still such a high amount of demand for icon cards on the market and icon SBCs. Just the fact of packing an icon just for some people has such a high draw to it. And it's really crazy to see how much demand there really is in icons year round, right? At the beginning of the game, everybody's just trying to get an icon in their squad. You know, they're doing icon swaps. That was a new thing this year in FIFA as well. We had the first ever icon swaps. So people were having icons in their clubs, you know, starting off right away at the start of the game. And that was EA's way of making icons more accessible this year to the average foot user, which I do think they did in terms of the icon swaps. Um, but on the market, icons were sometimes even more expensive this year. Those that, that was one thing this year on the market that was sometimes and sometimes more expensive than uh, prior years. Right? Was the the icons, especially the icons moments. But again, I'm here to talk about the icon SBCs because we started off. I think it was during like Black Friday. We had the um, we had the baby icon SBC that came out. And then after that, we had a middle icon SBC. We had a prime icon SBC. And we had the first ever icon moments upgrade SBC. We had two of them actually with the prime or moments upgrade. And then just the moments upgrade as well. They went all out this year with SBCs. And that's honestly what we're going to talk about a lot today. But the first thing, again, with, with icons is I expect this to happen again in FIFA 21, right? The EA does not take steps backwards. They just take steps forwards. They keep adding. They keep getting bigger and better in terms of content, especially on this game. The content, you can't argue with this, boys. I know the gameplay, that's a whole nother conversation, right? But the content in terms of objectives, in terms of SBCs, in the past two years on foot, and especially this year, the second half of FIFA 20, has uh, just taken off and hit a new level once again with all of the content that we have released daily, right? Daily content every single day. We're looking at our phones, 6 p.m. UK, 1 p.m. Eastern. What is the new content for today? What is it going to do to the market? What's it going to change? All that sort of stuff. We're, we're uh, almost, I would say, addicted, man. Every single day, 6 p.m. UK, EA is creating that kind of sense in us. They're creating a want and desire for content. And since they keep delivering that, that makes us want it more and more and want that daily content and strive for it and you know, kind of yearn for it every day. We wait for that 6 p.m. drop. We check our companion app. We check the web app. We check the console because we want to know what's going to get dropped on foot that day. There's just so much based around that. But again, these Icon Moments SBCs were a huge, huge hit this year. People love doing these. They will put so many coins and they would grind these and rinse so many coins of these and honestly destroy their clubs purely for these SBCs and the fact that they have a potential to pack an icon, which I think is crazy, right? But you know, people love icons, right? Because it reminds them of players that play the game when they were either a child or, you know, in the past. And now they have a chance to play with them in foot. Of course, they have the luxury 
of having um, links to every single item in the game. I mean, obviously, you don't have to try to work an icon in for chemistry because obviously it's getting the links just like that. And of course, there's some big time names that EA have been able to sign on and grab the rights to with even more coming in FIFA 21 that makes icons so illustrious and just so desired on this game. But again, in terms of icon SBCs, I would expect more of them during FIFA 21 more than ever, honestly. Uh, probably moments upgrades. You know, I wouldn't really expect stuff to come earlier. Uh, but I, I do hear that they're going to be refreshing moments. They're going to be updating the ratings, changing the positions possibly, and the stats again. So that'll be something we have to look forward to in terms of icons. All right, let's move on to the second thing. This is a big talking point as well. Guaranteed player pack SBCs. And this is the biggest thing. This is where it all started this year, okay? These SBCs right here is where it all started with the guaranteed player packs that honestly was taken to another level. In years past, we've had guaranteed TOTS packs. We've had, you know, guaranteed screen player packs. Maybe not, but, you know, you get the idea, right? Guaranteed a special promo version of a player when you turn in a squad. This year, the idea of the party bag came out during foot birthday, and the market absolutely went bananas for these SBCs. They went crazy for these party bag SBCs that came out during foot birthday. And this is honestly... I don't know if I would call it scary, but it's honestly wild to me how many times th these SBCs came out, how bad they were in terms of what you actually got from the pack, but still how many people were just addicted to them and really just wanted to test their luck, right? And just test their luck in one of these SBCs and see what they could get. They came out during, uh, they came out during summer heat as well, these party bag SBCs. And again, this is something I want you guys to keep in mind as we head into FIFA 21, right? There is so much demand for SBCs, when you get a guaranteed player out of it, and when you have potential to get something good, um, and it's like a special card type of a player, because this type of SBC affects everybody in the game. Exchange a squad to earn a foot birthday, foot future stars, or a road to the final player. And of course, you're thinking about a foot birthday, you're thinking Pogba, Bale, Di Maria, Alan St. Maximin, Sissoko, you're thinking of future stars, Holland. Jao Felix, Road to the Final. Maybe you're thinking about, um, you know, Kante, Militao. You know, this is earlier back in, in the game when some of those cards didn't have other, like, higher items or SBC cards. Um, but people just love knowing that they have an opportunity to pack something in a range that, you know, uh, is a special card in this game that's already been released. Like, yo, I could turn in this 81 and 82 rated squad and possibly pack myself a foot future stars Jao Felix. That would be sick, right? People just love that. It's like an upgraded pack, right? It's it's like opening a pack from the store or, you know, opening a promo pack, but you're getting something that's more guaranteed. Yes, you have to pay more coins for it or, you know, we have to turn in more players for it, but people just love these party bag SBCs. They love these 90 plus tots SBCs, the uh, the 92 plus tots, the, the 90 plus double upgrade. People love these SBCs so, so much. That's why you're seeing them continue to get re-released because EA, EA knows how many people are doing these SBCs. They see the completion percentage. They see the amount of people that are interacting with these and they keep putting them out because you know what? It's a win-win for EA Sports. They're making people happy by giving them cards they want to pack at this stage of the game. And they're learning that, hey, if people want to do this now, think about how much people are going to want to do this in the, the heat and the most hype portions of FIFA 21 this upcoming year, maybe during Footmas, maybe during Black Friday. They put out some sort of guaranteed SBC for players um, that people are going to want to actually pull those packs and they're going to dump their coins into those SBCs, which is going to make them lose coin value because they're turning in tradable players um, or turning in coins because they're buying players to put into an SBC. They're submitting that value for an untradable card, and that lowers their club value, lowers the amount of coins that they have, and then therefore, that person possibly has a higher chance of wanting to go and buy FIFA points because they need coins to continue to participate with content and stuff happening inside of FIFA 21. I'm obviously looking ahead to next year and thinking about this, how it could impact us in the upcoming game. I think FIFA 21, we're going to see the most SBCs from a year-round standpoint than we have ever seen. It honestly is crazy. Last year during FIFA 19, when the content really piped up during the second half of the year, I remember when the Foot Future Stars promo came out in FIFA 19, it was literally a shift in the way that content 
was put onto FIFA. There was just so much more content. That same shift happened again this year in the foot birthday time frame. Stuff just started going nuts, right? Team of the season, you know, summer heat promo, the best ever promotion on FIFA Ultimate Team history. In, in terms of the cards that we got, the, the value of stuff that we was out there, it was nuts, right? It was insane. The value of stuff that happened during the summer heat promo and it was just because of more and more SBCs and the valuing of those SBCs and expect that to continue in FIFA 21. I would be very surprised if we didn't have some sort of, maybe not an icon upgrade, but some sort of like party bag SBC or some sort of um, guaranteed player SBC for almost every single promotion this next year because EA knows how much people love those and how much they love completing those SBCs. And what does that mean? It means SBC fodder is going to be killer to trade with once again in FIFA 21. Now, this is nothing new, right? SBC fodder moves every single year. But look at these prices that 81s, 82s, 83s, 84s, all of the SBC fodder, look at how high this stuff has been maintaining in price throughout this year, right? Let's take a look at Kevin Campbell, an 83 rated card on this game. Throughout the whole year, this guy's fluctuated from like a thousand coins up to 3,000 coins when we get certain SBCs. You know, every once in a while, he booms up from 1K to 3K. Look what has happened since the end of the year. This guy doesn't have any other special cards, so he has never gone out of packs, right? Since June, since the start of June, this guy has not been below 3,100 coins Where when he was 1,000 coins for most of the entire year. And look, dude, he's holding a price of like six to 9,000 coins on a weekly fluctuation. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous, bro, that we are getting these types of fluctuations. And this is honestly seems like a test from EA. The fact that they are seeing that people are willing to pay 10,000 coins, right? 10,000 coins for an 83 rated card, which is normally one tenth of that price at its lowest or at its normal value during the year. That's scary because that means EA knows, hey, these guys will do whatever it takes to open some of these packs, to complete some of these SBCs. And that is something that makes me, I'm honestly probably going to trade a little bit more with SBC fodder in FIFA 21 because if it's going to, if we're going to have all these SBCs and we're going to just know that there's this much demand for SBC fodder on the game. That means I want to be involved with that because EA is going to put out more content related to that. And it's going to be a big time moneymaker because constantly these cards are going to fluctuate up and down with SBCs. Look at this hamstick, bro. 1,500 coins during March and we thought the game was done so before foot birthday. And then boom, look at this. The second half of the year, man. Look at this. Just last week, 13,000 coins. They had to update his price max to 17K. Usually 84s are maxed out at like 10,000 to 12,000 coins for the good and linkable ones. This dude now had to update his... They had to update all the price ranges for fodder crazy high because of the amount of demand there was for SBCs at the end of the year. So I know there's a couple other factors that go in there as well. You know, we start talking about, yes, some of those prices are very high right now because of the lack of supply. There's no promo packs. There's not a lot of tradable packs that are on the game in terms of from the SBCs. So yes, part of that is due to the supply, but um, people are still willing to pay the price. Even though there's a lack of supply, people are still buying 83s for 11, 12, 13,000 coins. That's crazy, or 84s for that amount, for that matter. But that is something I I think we learned from the, the market this year as well is that just people will go to whatever lengths needed to complete an SBC, which is wild. Expect that to continue in FIFA 21. And this is the last thing I want to talk about. All right, we're gonna take a little comparison here. We're looking at graphs, right? This is how a lot of the early stage FIFA trading stuff. We're gonna look at a lot of graphs from last year. Look at a lot of old videos and stuff like that. Um, Speaking of the year of supply for FIFA 20, that was the third point I wanted to make in this video today. Take a look at Cristiano Ronaldo, 93 rated, Juventus, Piemonte Calcio, striker in this year's game. Last year, he was a 94 rated striker, so a minus one rating. Stats are basically uh, identical in terms of this year Ronaldo versus last year Ronaldo. Ronaldo was very OP last year. And, you know, this year he was pretty OP, but he wasn't like super duper, you know, popular. He wasn't absolutely cracked out like he was in, in past FIFAs. He's still Ronaldo. He's still very good. But uh, the gold Ronaldo wasn't like a super OP card that a lot of people use this year. It was Neymar and Mbappe instead of Ronaldo, most likely. A lot of people use Messi too. But what I want to show you here 
is the difference in price. This is based off of a couple things, but the biggest factor in this price difference from year to year is supply. Let's take a look at FIFA 19 first. So Ronaldo started off the year at like 1.6 million coins first week. And then after Black Friday in the massive inflation with all of the pack coins, the packs that were opened and that coin supply that came onto the market, people had coins to buy cards. Ronaldo went from 1.6 mil day one to 2.5 million coins before team of the year. And when the market really starts to downfall for the rest of the year, what happened this year, right? So we went from 1.6 mil to 2.5 mil. That's Cristiano Ronaldo. This year, Ronaldo starts off at his highest ever. On the same date this year, September 26, which is what we looked at last year, he was 1.6 mil. He was 1.8 mil. So a little bit higher to start off the game. Okay. But, you know, in the same vicinity. Yep. Look what happens after this. Instead of growing up, instead of going up as we get the big, massive supply from Black Friday, right? This is the big Black Friday supply right here. He goes down to 1.3 mil and he bounces back up a total of 100,000 coins. He goes up 100K from Black Friday to this early December when the foot, uh, foot Miss promo team of the year come out and we have all this stuff happening in early December, which was crazy for the market and all those SBCs that came out. People went crazy for SBCs and they sold off on these cards and these cards were packed so much through upgrade packs, through the tradable pack supply SBCs. And that is what the big difference is here between this year and between last year. So many times last year, this is a video that I took on October 20th, 2019, almost a year ago. Every single day we were, see, we were seeing blips like this in the market. We were talking about the market keeps going lower. It never goes up. When is it going to rise? Just like we saw here with this Ronaldo, it never had the opportunity to rise because EA were constantly releasing pack supply SBC after pack supply SBC after pack supply SBC, 25K, 35K pack, even like a, like a 15K pack would impact the supply on some of those lower tier gold cards that were meta. And it, it, it caused their prices to continue to go down. That's why FIFA 20 is the year of supply because we had so many of SBCs this year like this one. I'm going to show you what I mean by a pack supply SBC. We had so many of these SBCs that just gave out simple packs, right? Simple packs, tradable and untradable, but most of them were tradable earlier on in the year that it really just put out so much supply for tradable cards on the market that those cards could never recover. There was never enough demand to have those cards rise throughout the rest of the year. So this is the typical pack supply SBC, right? You turn in a whatever squad, pretty easy, a lot of gold players, you know, maybe you have a nation requirement, maybe a league requ requirement, and you get like a 25K pack, right? Those were the SBCs this year that changed the FIFA market and made it the year of supply because every single day we got one of these in the October time period when I was showing you that video, we were getting SBCs like this almost every day or every other day. So you were seeing the market take a dip down, slightly rise back up, but not back to where it was and then dip down again with that supply coming in very consistently. That is why you saw cards like Cristiano Ronaldo never uh, go up to that price that they were in prior years and just be cheaper all year, right? Let's take a look. June, let's say July 1st. What was Ronaldo's price? July 1st, 243,000 coins at the end of FIFA 20. What was he last year on July 1st? July 1st last year, the dude is still 700,000 coins. Same thing if you go look at Mbappe from this year versus Mbappe last year, Neymar to Neymar. The amount of, dude, even in like December, right? During team of the year. January, first week of January, Ronaldo's gold cards, 2.2 million coins. What is he this year in the first week of January? 800K, 800,000 coins. Now, yes, he did drop one in rating and he, you know, he wasn't as meta maybe as in FIFA 19, but still this is Cristiano Ronaldo we're talking about here. And this just really goes to prove the point that pack supply this year, it wasn't necessarily the pack weight. It was the number of packs released and the amount of SBCs that were released that gave out tradable packs. And of course, people wanting to go and turn elsewhere in game with other content, with other upgrade packs, with icon SBCs that came out, you know, in that time frame as well. That is the kind of stuff that really made this year the year of supply. And, you know, Ronaldo, Messi, all of your gold based items had, were cheaper this year than they have ever, ever been. You can buy Messi. What was Messi's lowest point this year, right? I had a friend when I used to play FIFA, like back when I was a noob, right? FIFA 15, my first FIFA ever. One of my best friends was his whole entire goal of the year was to buy 
Lionel Messi's gold card in FIFA, like FIFA 15, right? Look how much Lionel Messi is right now. 130,000 coins. 130K for this Messi card is unbelievable. That is so, so cheap. I think this gets overlooked a lot and it shouldn't because this is big for FIFA and for the game going forward. So again, three things we talked about in today's video that we learned from the market in FIFA 20. Number one, Icon SBCs. People love them. Love them. They're willing to go to whatever depths and whatever uh, amount of price SBC cards they need to buy, fodder they need to buy to attain those Icon SBCs. Number two, people love pack SBCs for guaranteed player packs, guaranteed TOTS players, guaranteed party bags, guaranteed whatever. They love those type of packs. And again, they're willing to pay whatever when it comes to SBC fodder to get those cards. And then Number three, with the nor with the deflation of the market, prices being lower this year than ever with the amount of supply from packs that we had, I expect that to continue into FIFA 21. And that's going to be something we talk about a lot early game this year. It's going to be different from years past because last year we were waiting for cards to go up. I don't know if it's going to happen this year in FIFA 21, just like it didn't last year in FIFA 20. So again, a long video today, but a very important one, right? This is a lot of stuff that we can learn from FIFA 20. Take it with us into FIFA 21 and be a, a step ahead of the market already. Learning from your past mistakes is, is something that a lot of people commonly do in life. It is a very good thing to do. Don't even learn from your mistakes, right? Learn from just taking notice of things, you know, doing research, looking back on what happened. History tends to re repeat itself in FIFA Ultimate Team in a lot of ways. So that is what I am going to go in through with this video today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys learned something from it. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. If you enjoyed, enjoyed it again, smash the thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. I will catch you guys later. Peace out.